Hello, a great welcome to Idea Study Guide tutorial. Myself, Jarajan P. This is tutorial number 28 and covers the buckling analysis performed for a tubular truss joint. For detailed description of buckling analysis, tutorial 27 can be referred. So, let us start Idea Study Guide tutorial number 28. Please note that the link for the playlist for all earlier tutorials is given under the description of this video. So the model used for uh, the tutorial is shown here. As can be seen, it essentially consists of uh, a space tubular truss joint. Uh, it has got a vertical member, the vertical column member as you can see, it is a, a CHS, that is a circular hollow section of 200 mm external diameter and 20 mm thick and uh, this vertical member it receives four tubular members in space and each of this member has got a dimension of uh, say as you can see it's a 140 mm diameter with a 5 mm thickness and uh, the detailed description of this model is already provided in some other tutorial so I am not uh, going into the details of the model development so let me also introduce you to the loads that are applied as can be seen from this table, you can see that each of these diagonal numbers, that is a M2, M3, M4, and M5, they receive a compressive load of 125 kN. Okay, so we would like to perform a buckling analysis for the center joint, and we will see the buckling modes. We will also see that the buckling is initiated whether from the mem connected member or from the connecting plates. Okay, so before performing the uh, buckling analysis, it is important that we perform the EPS, that is what we call as the plastic uh, stress strain analysis, uh, just to see that whether uh, all the components of the connection are uh, uh, okay for the given loading or not. So, as usual, let us just calculate this model for the applied loads and see whether that, uh, you know, the connecting plates, the bolts, as well as the welds are uh, uh, acceptable or not. And accordingly, after seeing the results of this, uh, what we call as the EPS or the plastic strain analysis, we will switch over to the buckling analysis and we will see whether the buckling requirements are uh, satisfied or not. So, okay, fine. I think that we have the results, yes. As can be seen from these results, analysis is performed for 100% of the loads and the plates, okay, there is a, a slight excess in the strain, it is 0.7%, yet still it is acceptable. And the bolts are tested to a utility level of 0.76 and as you can see that the welds are taken up to 98.2 percentage and here please remember uh, here it is written buckling not calculated it does mean that we should go for a separate buckling analysis okay from the eps analysis it should not provide you any kind of the buckling parameters so how do you do we perform a separate buckling analysis it is very simple switch to the check ribbon okay this is the ribbon which you should check okay so here as you see calculate button here you will find an arrow okay just to press it and here there are two options you can go for a string conversion analysis that is what we call as the conventional non-linear analysis and also we can perform a string uh, with the additional buckling analysis as well okay so what we can do is that we can press this is string buckling okay so as you can see that it will perform the buckling analysis okay and it will provide you the basic parameters. Uh, basically, as already discussed in the earlier tutorials, uh, Idea Statica provides the results of the buckling analysis in terms of uh, the critical load multipliers. And uh, Idea Statica uh, classifies uh, the results of the buckling uh, analysis under three categories. For example, in the case of the primary members and the connecting members, it specifies that uh, the critical load multiplier uh, factor it must be less than 15 and uh, when we are interested in uh, the uh, buckling analysis of uh, other uh, connected components like for example the stiffeners the ribs etc idea statica consider it as an isolated component and say that the buckling uh, the, uh, for the for the for the buckling to be acceptable the critical load uh, load multiplier it should be less than 3 so let us see the buckling analysis results, yes, it has performed the analysis properly, yes, buckling 23.93. So, please look here, here, uh, these connecting plates, okay, each of these connecting plates, let me just take the model here, 
Yes, each of these connecting plates, as you can say that, they are directly receiving the members. So, the acceptance criteria for the buckling chosen by Idea Statica is the same as the criteria that is specified for the main members because any of uh, the buckling okay, that happens in this connecting plates as well as in the gussets, it is likely to affect the main members directly. So, accordingly, the acceptance criteria for the buckling for such a connection will be obviously that the critical load multiplier it should be more than 15. Okay, it should be more than 15. And what is that critical load multiplier? It is nothing but, for example, here the buckling uh, load multiplier it is given as 23.93. It means that if P is the load currently acting on this model, okay, 23.93 times P will be the load that is required to produce the buckling. And obviously, this is 23.93, it is greater than 15, and so the buckling analysis are acceptable. So, let us just quickly see the buckling results. So, as you can see that if you press, you know, the buckling, it provides you the local buckling of the joint in terms of, please look here, the load that we consider for the buckling analysis LE1. And this factor means, this is a factor, okay, by which the load given in the combination LE1 should be multiplied in order to reach the buckling state. And here we see that under mode shape 1, under buckling mode 1, Okay, there is a factor safety of 23.93, which is obviously obviously greater than 15. Hence, it is acceptable. Okay, so let us quickly see the buckling shape as well. So we go to this buckling shape, press it. Okay, and we can also do some kind of a meshing also. Right. So let us see. Uh, okay, so let us see the deformed shape also because of the buckling. Okay. Yes. So. Just see the buckling shape one. So as you can see that there is. So let me just rotate the model also simultaneously. So look here. So here you will find that okay. Yes. So there is a bending of this okay of this connecting plate. Okay. So this this plate has buckled, and this connecting plate has also buckled. Whereas we see that for other connections there is no buckling. It does mean that. As you can see that this joint consists of two methods of connecting the tubular members to the main vertical member. And here we find that only one type wherein you know the connecting plate it is welded okay uh, deep into this connecting member that is subjected to the buckling. Okay, so as you can see that yes, so there is a buckling which has happened in the connecting plate, and this is the buckling that governs our buckling analysis results. But in spite of that, 23.93 it is very much higher than 15. So our uh, components, connecting plate components are good enough. But if we find that this ratio is less than 15, obviously we should go for reinforcing the connecting components. For example, we may go for uh, increasing the thickness of this plate. Okay, fine. So for example, if you see the other mode, so it is important that we see switch over to the various modes just to see that whether uh, in any other mode some other components are getting affected. In this mode also we find that it's the same plate. Okay, means that our other connections are uh, good enough. Okay, so as you can see that okay, yes. So you find that the okay it is a uh, it is the same uh, system of the connecting plates. Here you will find that in this uh, buckling mode. The connected members are also affected. You can see that at this point they are also tested. Okay, so this idea statica provides you know here six more shapes. Okay, six buckling uh, shapes, and obviously the shape one is critical for which we find that the critical load multiplier is the least that is 23.93, but it is greater than 15. Hence the buckling results are acceptable. So we find that as far as this connection is concerned, it is a uh, good uh, from the consideration of. Uh, the uh, plastic strain analysis and also it satisfy what we call as the buckling analysis results as well so that is all for this uh, tutorial so thanks a lot and have a nice day